Hello, crypto fans. Time for your overview of the week. Ripple wants to pay, McAfee wants to get paid. Buterin versus Craig Wright, round 65. We got away from the Death Cross, but like the Death Star, it is a tough enemy to defeat. But first, Bitcoin bull Tom Lee. Tom Lee estimates that Americans made a lot of money in crypto last year. A motherfucking rich bitch. And now US households owe 25 billion in capital gains tax. Death and taxes? Yes. Death and taxes? With tax day looming, Lee predicts an increased sell-off that could weaken Bitcoin. After mid-April, Lee thinks prices will recover and will achieve his year-end forecast of 25K for Bitcoin. But currently, the market is on shaky ground. Bitcoin just avoided the death cross, failing to stay above 7K. Ether is trading below $400, and Ripple trades below 50 cents, or sorry, 50 cents. And for Ripple, their troubles continue. XRP trades on 133 exchanges across the globe, but is still not represented on two major US exchanges, Coinbase and Gemini. Last year, they even tried to pay these two exchanges to be listed, which isn't unusual or illegal. Well, maybe this will help. I really don't think I should. Yeah, you still don't think so. But for Ripple, being listed is crucial, for even the news of the listing might significantly increase its price. Ripple offered $1 million in cash to Gemini and wanted to lend $100 million worth of XRP to Coinbase to let its users start trading. Are you f***ing serious? This isn't enough for anything. What are you, a six-year-old? It didn't work. While owning XRP does not mean you own stake in Ripple, XRP is still controlled by Ripple, which means that the SEC might consider it a security. The SEC has recently warned unregistered exchanges against listing security tokens. Ripple is a world away from our next guy, John McAfee, a man many wouldn't trust with monopoly money, let alone actual money. He's charging startups 100,000 per tweet to promote tokens to his 800,000 plus followers. Hey John, thank you for your vote of confidence. McAfee's been doing this for six months already, but only just mentioned it now, seems legit. The coins he's promoted have been compared to penny stocks. McAfee will only promote coins he believes in, and the McAfee crypto team claims that 90% of applications are rejected. So, Durov, we hope you have a good PowerPoint ready. And now on to South Korea. Craig Wright, the failed Satoshi Nakamoto, gave a speech at the Deconomy Conference which made an audience member pretty mad. Not just any audience member, the esteemed Vitalik Buterin. Here's what went down. Why is, why is this fraud allowed to speak at this conference? Yeah! <laughs> But this is not all the news on South Korea. Seoul is planning its own cryptocurrency, the S-Coin. It will be used as a payment method for welfare programs, young job seekers, and environmentally minded citizens. The S-Coin news might improve the crypto mood in South Korea, where many young people who invested in cryptocurrencies are now getting frustrated. The dramatic market fall led to a number of suicides among young people who lost their investments. And finally, to Japan. Coincheck, the exchange that was hacked for over 500 million worth of NEM coins is being acquired by one of Japan's top three brokerage firms, Monex. The price is 34 million, but don't think that's too low. Monex will also split profits 50-50 with current shareholders during the next three years. It is also important to remember that Coincheck agreed to reimburse 440 million to the victims of the hack. Coincheck got hacked, but clearly has learned some life hacks along the way. Like, share, comment. Every time you don't, Satoshi dies a little inside.